Hello, and welcome to my show, Harvest Knows Best, because I do. This is the premiere episode of my new show. I'm very excited. First, I do want to thank Cable Channel 10 for allowing me to come and speak to you today. And I hope that this is the first of many conversations that we can have together. And, um... I do want to thank Cable Channel 10 because it is a tremendous sacrifice on their part to give me this opportunity to come speak with you. Uh, they provided it as a public service. They're not charging me, which is really, really sweet of them. And I'm especially grateful for the coveted 3 to 3.30 a.m. time slot. Namaste. It's, it's a real honor and a privilege for you to get to sit and listen to the things that we're going to discuss today. Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself in case you don't know me. First of all, my name is Harvest. I am a mommy and that's all that I am. Because once you become a mommy, that's all you are. That's all you should be. And that's what makes up my totality. I am a mommy. I'm a woke mommy. <laughs> and I feel that I've been called. I mean, if you're religious or spiritual, you could say that possibly someone from a higher plane has come and given me this task of speaking with you and helping you. And mainly I'm, I'm talking to the mommies right now. I suppose the daddies could benefit as well, but really we're looking at the mommies because when you talk about children and raising children, um, the mommies really, um, especially today, I'm thinking that the mommies really need the most help. Like they are the most, um, I don't want to say disastrous because that sounds bad. Um, I'll just say that it, uh, Dealing with you is a bit labor intensive and you need lots of help and correction and that's why I'm here. So what I did in preparation for today's show, about a month ago I posted an open question in the penny saver and I asked people to please write to me and give me their questions as parents or expectant mothers. And we would answer them on the show. Now today I have a few of the first questions that I've received and I'm hoping that I will receive more. So um, if you have questions, I do not believe in the internet. So I do not interact with people on the internet um, unless it's absolutely necessary. Occasionally I am called to school people on babycenter.com, um, but I keep it very limited. I only help people when it's really, really dire. Like if you have someone using formula or facing their children forward, life or death moments like that, then I get involved, but only when it is really serious. Like I say, I'm like a trauma nurse. You know, I come in when people are putting their children's lives at risk. Like if they're using plastic, yeah, it gets really serious. So that's when I have to intervene. Other than that, I do not use the internet. I also do not own a television. I don't even know what TV shows are on these days. I'm, I have no idea. I don't, I don't believe in television. So I will actually never see this because I do not watch television at all. We don't own a television. No. So I need to get a little real with you right off the bat because one thing you need to understand first of all about me is that I'm very direct. I will not I will not mollycoddle you. I will not hmm, I will not be nice to you all the time because it's sort of like a gentle boot camp. Sometimes you need someone to kind of give you a few light slams every now and then and that's why I'm here. And, um, first of all, I have to say, if you're watching this right now, you're already doing something that you shouldn't be doing. You are 
devoting your time to this show. And if you have children, if you are a mommy, that is your first mistake. You shouldn't even be watching television. You should use this time instead to focus on your littles. If nothing else, you should be watching them while they sleep. We must monitor our children at all times. So you need to acknowledge your selfishness because you are selfish and it is evidenced by the fact that you are right now sitting here watching this instead of devoting your time to your littles. And you need to feel shame. You know, we try to do away with shame in our society, but truly I believe there's a place for it. And I think there is definitely a place for shame when you're talking about mommies. There, there's plenty of room for shame when you're speaking to mommies. And I'm here to bring you that shame. It's, it's my pleasure to do that for you today. So consider that as you sit there with your lazy, shameful, selfish self watching this. How could I better use this time? Could I, be, could I devote it to cultivating my ass on the couch? Or could I get up and go gaze at my children while they sleep? Maybe I could use my time even more efficiently. While I watch my children while they sleep, I could be crocheting some backpacks for them. Or, I don't know, you know, kneading some sourdough bread to, you know, to... Uh, feed them tomorrow. I could, I could be sewing a new hairband. I could be doing all kinds of things for my littles instead of just plopping down and focusing on myself. If you wanted to focus on yourself, you shouldn't have had children in the first place. There. Yes, I did just say that. Mm-hmm. Okay, Frank is giving me some sort of signal. What is this? You know, I take offense to that. Oh, I think he's telling me to to move along. Okay, sorry, Frank, I'm sorry. He's, that was a, that, I know that gesture. That was rude. What? Oh, the cards. I'm sorry. I thought you were giving me the finger. I still think you were. Okay. I have the questions that I received from my penny saver request. I have crafted cards. These are made of fermented tree bark and blueberry dye. Now I'm going to read these to you. I made these cards myself, of course, and you could do the same. There are instructions in my latest book which will be available at the Camden Mall starting this Saturday if you're interested. Yes, handcrafted note cards in 37 easy steps. Now, that's later. Right now we want to focus on the question. So our first question, our first question comes from Tasha. And I did not read these ahead of time. I, I want to prepare myself as we go along because I feel that The best answers are instinct answers. I don't need to overly, I don't need to process them too much because then it seems that the answers are more contrived and they're just not as judgmental as they need to be. Tasha says, no matter what I eat, it always leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Well, this isn't starting out too well. This makes food really unappealing. Most of the time I have to force myself to eat by thinking of my baby. Is there anything I can do to deal with the bad taste? Well, Tasha, I don't know you personally, um, and I almost wish I had these people here so I could look at them and judge them that way. A lot of times I can tell by looking at someone um, what their diet consists of, and then I can judge them more properly, you know. But Tasha's not here, so we don't know what she looks like. But I'm going to guess that you, Tasha, only have yourself to blame, honestly. Um, If food is unappealing to you, I know a lot of women want to blame it on pregnancy or hormones or things of that nature. Um, 
it's it's actually not true. Um, a lot of times you find food unappealing or you lose your appetite simply because your diet is terrible. You know, if you would focus more on eating healthy foods instead of just packing garbage into your stomach all day long, I think you would find that your taste buds would reawaken. You have overloaded them so much over the years with refined sugar and processed foods, I'm sure, um, that, you know, your body has just gone on strike and your baby is going to suffer because of your terrible, terrible diet. You really need to focus more on whole foods. You need more fruits and vegetables that you grow yourself, of course, whole grains that you grow yourself, obviously. Um, you know, you have the lazy moms that will go to the store and purchase these items, but really, if you truly love your baby, you're going to grow these things yourself. You're, you're going to harvest your own wheat. You're going to grind it yourself. You're going to grow the vegetables. You're going to grow the fruits. You're going to pick them yourself. You'll go out there every day with a fly swatter to keep the bugs off if you really love your child. And I would be willing to bet that you have not been doing that. Um, so basically, you need to shed the laziness. Think of it as like an old skin, like you're a snake, you know, and you're shedding your skin and it's a sign of growth which right now is a wonderful opportunity to grow and become a more decent person as far as what you put into your body. And you owe it to your child to do this. And there's no excuse other than laziness. And laziness is never an excuse. Not in Harvest's world, it's not. So if you're finding food to be unappealing, um, then you need to get on out there and plant your garden and hope that you can hold on until it starts to produce. Um, other than that, I'm afraid that you and your baby are probably going to starve to death. I certainly hope not. I would appreciate it if you would follow up with me just to let me know that that is not what happened. I mean, I would hate to hear that. There's really not much else I can do for you, though, other than keep you in my thoughts and hope that everything works out. So... Just keep me posted, Tasha. Okay? Enough about her. Now we're going to talk about Kimberly. I got a question from someone named Kimberly. First of all, I'm sorry that you have such a terrible name. Kimberly says, I'm 13 weeks pregnant. First of all, when I was at that stage, I was counting my pregnancy by days, but I'm sure you're doing your best. I'm 13 weeks pregnant and having the worst time with acne. It's affecting my relationship with my husband. Wow. I feel like I look so horrible. I want to avoid him and everyone else. My doctor told me not to use over-the-counter medications. What can I do? Well, first of all, Kimberly, you need to look at your priorities. They are clearly misplaced. Um... It sounds to me like you're more concerned about your relationship with your husband than anything else and your looks. Um, you are already a mommy. Your focus needs to be on your baby. Not on your looks, not on your husband. Those things don't matter anymore. Um, you know, I guess some people would argue that your looks do matter and that your husband deserves to not have you focus solely on the baby, but, you know, you're, I don't understand how there's, this is even an argument that we're having because you're a mommy and I mean, it's like that period, you're done, you're a mommy. Okay. That's, that's what you are. So if you have acne, first of all, your priorities are, are misplaced horribly. That, oh my goodness, you have acne. And what's the first thing you think of? Your husband and your looks. And you're saying that you, you avoid him and everyone else. 
you sound like a very vain, neurotic person that you would care so much about what you look like on the outside. It doesn't matter. Um, I almost feel like I don't owe you this because you are such a terrible person, but I will tell you now, if you have acne, again, kind of like that whole appetite, taste of food thing, people want to blame it on pregnancy and say it's related to that. It's actually not. It has nothing to do with the fact that you're pregnant. A lot of women like to use pregnancy as an excuse to get away with things like gaining weight, um, getting out of going places, you know, having skin issues, weird hair. I mean, we can do better. We can do better if we try harder. We really can, Kimberly. If you're having trouble with acne, again, it's just like Tasha. It's because of your diet. And I really... I think I need to have the guests start coming in here. Frank, is that possible? He's got his earbuds in. He's not even listening to me. You could benefit from this. Whatever. I'm thinking we should bring these people in because I really want to be able to see Kimberly. I want to see... I want to see what she looks like. I can't judge her unless I get a chance to look at her. But I can tell you, Kimberly, sweetie, if you're listening... If you have acne, it is because of the focus in your life. First of all, your focus is misdirected. You are not focusing on your little. You are focusing on everyone else, including yourself. And that is seriously toxic. And second, it's your diet, sweetheart. It's the way you eat. It is the way, it is the things that you put into your body. Um, that is the only cause of your acne. I don't want to hear hormones. I don't want to hear that. No, no, no. It is your fault if you have acne. And if your husband no longer finds you attractive, that's your fault too. I'm Like I said, I don't mince words. Uh, you know, it's, it's really something where you need to go look in the mirror. Go, go look at yourself in the mirror and point and you will see the source of your acne. It's, it's you, honey. And until you start growing food, eating the right things, you're going to have acne. And yeah, your husband's probably going to leave you. So um, I don't know what else I can say other than, you know, good luck with that. Sorry. Oh my goodness, Frank, we have a long way to go. I should have taken an hour slot. Excuse me for having my drink. I have a steaming cut, a steaming cup of hot carob. Hashtag cheat day. Mm -mm -mm. There's a little bit, there's just a little bit of raw pine needle in there. It adds a nice little, a little zing to the, to the carob. It's wonderful. You don't need sugar when you have pine needles. Now this question from Barbara is really long. Barbara is very full of herself. I haven't even... I, wow. Barbara had a lot to say. I'm going to tell you what Barbara had to say. My 25-month-old son, Joey, only babbles. He only babbles. He can say Dada and often calls his father that. He only says Mama when he is whining. But sometimes... He just babbles on and on, and it seems like he's holding a conversation that you can't understand, kind of like Barbara, because he uses hand gestures and facial expressions. People tell me I should make him talk by making him tell me cup and not give him the cup until he says it. Trying this only makes him have a temper tantrum, and I am worried that he might be saying it in his own way, but I can't tell, and I'm still pushing him to say it, when he may believe he has already said it, thus causing him frustration. Should I be worried about this? Should I try anything else? Well, first of all, Barbara, you talk way too much. Um, that's probably why your little isn't talking, because he can't get a word in edgewise. I mean, sweetie, these are more words than any woman should say in an entire day. 
when you have littles, when you are a mommy, you have to give them opportunities. You have to, you have to give, you have to have gaps in the conversation to allow them to participate. In my home, we have child-led communication. Typically, I don't speak unless Haven and Gi give me an opportunity because I don't want to hamper their development, their intellectual development, their mental development, their emotional development. And if you have a 25-month-old, it is especially important that you let him speak. And I'm thinking, just based on your question, that you never let anyone speak. Um, I don't know how you've even noticed that he doesn't talk much. Because it seems to me that that's all you do. Um, not to make you feel bad. I really hate making other mommies feel bad, but... You know, I feel I feel led to point out what my own littles were doing at 25 months because I remember, I remember um, Harvest no, Haven when Haven was 25 months old. She was starting her freshman year of high school. It was so sweet. I remember taking her picture. Um, of course, she could walk by then, and um, I took her picture before we started school. Of course, I homeschool. We don't we don't uh, allow others to educate our littles. It's it's vulgar and inappropriate. Um, I'm sure you're the same. And um, before we started unschool that year, I I took her picture. She was so sweet. She did this for the first time. It was adorable. And then we went into calculus. That was her first class. Of course, she made a perfect score. And Gi, when he was 25 months old. Um, Oh, I remember that month was so exciting. He learned to drive a stick shift. He did. He drove our truck in the Christmas parade. It was adorable. Yeah. And what else was he doing that year? Oh, he uh, he finally. It, let's see. Was that the first? I don't. I don't have Fisher here to. Um, he has my. He has my journal. At twenty five months, I believe that was the first level of mastery in uh, Mandarin, I'm thinking. I'm thinking it was. I'm a little hazy because he's working on his 12th language right now. So, I, I mean, <laughs> my children, maybe, maybe my children are a little advanced. I'm not sure. But, you know, I'm, l I'm looking at what your little Joey, is that? Yeah, you say here his name is Joey. He's only babbling at 25 months. Bless your heart. That must be difficult. You know, I don't know what I did to get such wonderful kids, but probably my children, the last time they babble, they might have been about two weeks old. You know, I don't, maybe that's not normal, but I'm pretty sure my children were speaking in complete paragraphs at the latest, maybe at a month old. Um, because they were walking it, they were walking in a month old, and they were speaking in full paragraphs in a month. So you know, hang in there, honey. Another thing I may suggest is, uh, th and you may not know this, you picked a toxic name for your child. This may very well be hampering his development. It could be causing these grotesque delays that you're seeing in your son. Um, I'm going to be at the Camden Mall promoting my new book, and I'm also going to have copies of my last book, The Little Book of Toxic Baby Names. Now, I don't want to alarm you, but Joey is one of the toxic baby names. Um, so, if he's only 25 months old, you may still be able to change it without a lot of trouble. I would recommend that. Um, and as a compliment to the Toxic Baby Names book, you also get a copy of the safe names for your child. Um, I would recommend something a little different, like maybe Sage. Sage is a good name. Rainbow is another one um, that that has positive energy to it. And it would definitely go a long way towards helping him be able to, to actually communicate like a normal person can do at that age. I mean, I just... It's like everybody at that age can do it. I don't know what your son's problem is. So... Yeah, you, you really need to do something about that. You know, and if you're giving him cups, 
That's another thing you need to look at. You know, there are so many levels of issues with your question. Exclusively breastfeeding is your only option here, Barbara. Okay, breastfeed your child and he won't be such a freak. I really hate to have to point this out to people over and over. It makes my life difficult. Frank. Um, Frank. The camera is tilting because you're, yeah. Thank you. The, thank you. I think you're nodding off. Nodding off. Take the earbuds out. Frank is not helping me. And I'm running out of time. We have a question here from Samantha. Samantha says, It's a constant struggle to get my daughter up and out in the morning. She refuses to wash her face, brush her teeth, get dressed, or let me comb her hair. I've tried getting her to bed earlier, but it doesn't make the mornings any better. Well, Samantha, it's almost like you're blaming your child for this. Um... You don't say how old your child is. I'm assuming it's a girl. It's your daughter, okay. Well, I have to brag on my, my own little haven a little bit. You know, by the time she was three months old, she could get up, get dressed, and brush her teeth and hair. She already had teeth. Yeah, I don't know what I did to have such advanced children, but I'm very proud of my littles. If she's not letting you do these things, She's trying to tell you something. See, this is what child-centered, child-led development and communication is all about. You have to listen to your child. Actually listen. Like, put the phone down, turn the TV off, look at your child, and try to figure out what they're trying to tell you. Now, most people aren't as lucky as I am. You know, they don't, they don't have children that are as advanced as mine, so they have to look for nonverbal cues. I can't remember the last time I had to do that with my littles, but they are quite special. You have to look for nonverbal cues from your child, and you're getting lots of nonverbal cues from your daughter. So you've wasted your time sending me this question uh, when you should have been paying attention to your daughter. She doesn't let you wash her face, brush her teeth, get dressed, or comb her hair. Well, maybe you need to stop and look at it from her point of view. <clears throat> where are you in such a hurry to go? Um, you, where are you going so that this is a problem? Of course, you homeschool. No, you probably don't. What am I thinking? No. And I'm guessing you probably work outside the home. I mean, why else would you be in such a hurry to get out of the house? Why do you need to leave the house? Look, I need I need to just I need I need to just have a billboard that says this, I guess, or write it on my forehead. I don't know. Um, when you are a mommy, when you become a mommy, that should be your main focus in life not going places. Where do you need to go that is so important that you have to get your child up and do all of these things on your schedule? You need to look at your child's schedule. You need to look at what your child needs. Maybe she isn't ready for you to wash her face or brush her teeth or dress her or comb her hair, any of that stuff. You know, may maybe she needs more time than you're allowing her to have. Um, so, you have to decide what, what is more important to you. Is your child's development important? Is your child's, is your child's wholeness important to you? Because if it is, then you, you know what you need to do. You need to eliminate these distractions, uh, school, work, whatever it is that's, that's distracting you from focusing on your little, uh, that all needs to go away. And that can be done very easily if you just try hard enough. Okay? So again, I don't mean to be so blunt, but uh, Samantha, you need to try harder, sweetie. Okay? God bless. Okay, and we have a question here from Mary. 
It says, this one is a little weird. A friend of mine says, I post too many pictures on social media that are not child-centered, particularly of the eclipse that we just experienced. Is this something I should be concerned about? Well, first of all, you ended your sentence in a dangling participle, so clearly you're the Antichrist. Um, now, I have mixed feelings about social media. First of all, I don't know anything about it because I don't go online unless I have to, as I said. But, you know, I understand that some women feel the need to every now and then do something that is not child-centric. Um, but you have to fight that. You know, it's kind of like when you're on a diet and you find something alluring. I can't tell you the times I passed by a carob bar in Whole Foods and my mouth would just start watering. But you have to remember, you know, harvest, you can't have everything you want. Okay, go home and eat your broccoli and be happy. And that's exactly what I do. That, that's what I always do. <laughs> um, we can't have everything we want. You know, I would love to have my husband here, but he's still in South America, saving the Argentinian water flea. But sometimes we have to just soldier on and let go of things that we may want or think we want or think we deserve, however you want to look at it. So, Mary, um, I know you think that it's harmless to post photos. To First of all, you have to take the photos. To take the photos, so you're taking time away from your littles to take these pictures and then put them online. And uh, it looks like maybe you were doing something during the eclipse. Maybe you were taking pictures, messing with your phone. Um, you know, I think you need to look more at not so much whether or not it's appropriate to post pictures on social media as it is. You need to look at the fact that you are taking you're taking precious time away from your littles. And you need to be ashamed of yourself. During that eclipse, you should have been focused on your children, not on your phone, not on whatever device you were using to view the eclipse or take pictures of the eclipse or record the eclipse. You're a, you're a monster. You're an absolute monster. And you don't deserve, you don't even deserve to have children. How could you not focus on your children during such a special moment? How could you not? I know it was pitch dark and you probably couldn't see them anyway. You should have been gazing at your children. You should have been looking at them, staring into the dark where you assume their eyes are. That's what you should have been focused on. Not the eclipse. I mean, there's going to be another one in seven or eight years. Not in your area, but there will be another one. If you travel 15 hours, you can get to it. There will be another one that you can see. You only get to look at your littles for a little while. And then they grow up and they're gone. So, uh, shame on you for not focusing on them during the eclipse. And all these other moments in their life. Um... My best advice to you, put your phone down the garbage disposal and turn it on, okay? Your life will be a lot better for it. And on behalf of your children, thank you. Then this question is from Dawn. My son is four. Four. And he's already been kicked out of preschool for his bad behavior. I'm just at my wit's end. What am I to do? Well, Dawn, first of all, I'm sure your son is exactly four. No, sweetie. He's probably like 47 months, 48 months, four, or 49 months. Um, but whatever. If you want to measure his age in terms of years, you know, whatever. Um, it just so it shows already we see how lazy you are, and we know why your child has been kicked out of preschool for bad behavior. He has a lazy mommy. Um, first of all, you know how I feel about schooling outside of the home. I feel that it is wholly inappropriate 
for children to be educated outside of your reach. Um, you should be within arm's reach of your children at all times. Um, this especially applies to their education. Parents who truly care will do this. Um, clearly you do not. I'm thinking it may be a blessing in disguise, though, that he's been kicked out of preschool for bad behavior. You remember what I said about those nonverbal cues? For all you lazy moms out there who have nonverbal children because you haven't, you know, you haven't bonded with them sufficiently for them to learn how to speak. Um, your child, I believe, is trying to tell you something, Dawn. Your child is trying to tell you that you need to be taking care of educating him and, you know, showing him how things work. You should be unschooling your child not strangers. See, it's lazy mommies who send their children off to strangers. <sighs> I wish there was something I could do to just make mothers see that. See, I don't call them mommies. They don't qualify as mommies. They're not mommies. They're mothers. They've given birth, but they don't really have children. No, they're not mommies. And deep down they know it. Um, that's why I now travel with a bodyguard, but I'm going to keep spreading the truth. Absolutely. I'm not going to stop. These people are not going to intimidate me. Okay, we have another question from Candace. Frank's telling me, I, I'm going, Frank. I am. If we run over, don't worry about it. Okay, I have some soap for you. I have soap I can let you... I make soap. I brought some. No, it doesn't have pot in it. Why? I'm going to give you some soap if, if we run over, okay? Yes, I am bribing you with soap. Why are you laughing? Okay. Don't pay any attention to Frank. Candace writes, when I need a break... Uh, we are not starting off well here. When I need a break, I turn the kids over to Daddy for a little while. Our daughter can be a handful, and he sometimes deals with this by... Spanking her. I'm sorry. I'd rather he use timeouts, but I don't want to criticize him when he's supposed to be in charge. After all, she's his daughter, too. Shouldn't he have some say in how she's disciplined? How should I deal with this? Well, first of all, uh, Daddy needs to go. Daddy needs to be taken away immediately. Um, you can't S-word your children. You can't, you can't do that. Seriously, no. Uh, yeah, Daddy needs to go. Tell the kids you took him to a nice farm and he has lots of room to run and play and he's really happy. Yeah, we can't have that. Um, I'm also not a big fan of time out. See, Candace, the thing is, if you listen to your child, and this, this applies to your child at any age, if you really get down on their level and listen to them, they'll tell you what they need. They'll tell you how to discipline. They will tell you that. And discipline is not the same as punishment. Discipline is teaching. And they will let you know how to teach them. Okay? If you try a method of discipline and they cry, it's clearly not the right one. Okay? You need to learn to bargain with them, communicate, let them have a voice and a vote in the way things go in your household. Okay? They, you can't treat them like, like little, little young people. I mean, you have to give them a, vo a vote, a voice. I'm not saying you have to be their friend, although they may not have other friends. My, never mind. Um, you have to let your child lead you in the way to uh, deal with situations. Of course, I'm lucky. My littles never get in trouble. They never do. I don't know how I got so lucky, but that's never been an issue with us. Um, yeah. Really, all we have to do is sit down and have a chat and a hug, and we straighten out everything. It's always nice. There is harmony in our home, and that is why we don't have issues like you do, Candace. Um, so, 
send daddy to a farm, communicate with your children. It's going to take some time and effort on your part, which I know you don't want to do. But if you want a harmonious home, you're going to have to listen to your children and let them lead you in the way to handle issues. And until then, you're just going to keep running into ridiculous things. Now, Lori has something to say. Lori says, My mother doesn't really approve of my wonderful husband, and he feels uncomfortable around her. She wants to be in the delivery room. Oh, sorry. She wants to be in the delivery room for the birth of our baby. But I know my husband would rather she wasn't. I love my husband and want this to be our special event. How do I tell my mom that we'd like to be alone for the delivery? Um, first of all, Lori, what are you thinking? Please tell me you're not going to, like, a hospital to have your baby. This, this is completely inappropriate. Um, no. That, and I'm guessing you said delivery room. I'm guessing that's what you mean. Okay. Let me tell you how this works, sweetheart. No mommy does that. If you do that, you're going to walk in there, mommy. You're going to walk out a mother. Okay. You might as well just announce to the world that you don't really care. You just, you know, it's just la-di-da, laissez-faire, namby-pamby, whatever, wishy-washy. We'll just do whatever with our child. We'll just throw them in a We'll just throw them in a daycare center, then we'll throw them in a government school. We'll just let other people handle all this. You're going to go in there and let them... Well, you know what they're going to do. If you really want to do it right, you shouldn't even need anybody there at all. I had my children completely alone out in the woods, like nature intended. Okay, pine needles are very useful for cleaning up things. Okay, you don't need anybody there to assist you. If you're really serious about being a mommy, why is this even an issue? Tell your mom, tell your husband to buzz off. You got this. And you do, you got this. Okay, don't worry about the pain. Don't worry about complications. If you're a, if you're a true woke mom, it's not going to be an issue anyway. Skip all that. It's just needless noise and negativity in your life that you don't need. So this, this is a, this is a non-issue really. Um, so if, if you, if you insist on having your husband there for like, I don't know, whatever reason, mine, I know when Guy was born, uh, he was playing darts down at the pub and Haven, I think he was at the farmer's market. But either way, he was very excited to come back and find the child. And he was appropriately celebratory and it was wonderful. Um, but if he has to participate, I suppose he could drive you out to the edge of the woods and wait in the car. You know, he would be close by. He could hear you. You know, maybe you could have a walkie talkie or something. But you, you really ultimately don't need to have anyone there. If you have someone there, it's just laziness. It's really just laziness, and you need to try harder. So please keep that in mind, okay? Don't, don't start your child's life off wrong, okay? It's like when you take a wrong step when you start, the whole thing's going to be messed up. So just, just avoid that. Stacy, have a... A little ditty here from Stacy. Stacy says, When I'm out in public, whether I'm grocery shopping or waiting in line at the post office, people ask personal questions about my pregnancy and sometimes even put their hand on my belly. How can I tell them to mind their business without being rude? Well, Stacy, I don't mean to be rude, but what are you doing out in public anyway? I mean, what do you have to do that is so important that you have to leave the house? I mean, you want to talk about rudeness? You're being rude to your unborn baby right now. 
You're, you're going where? You're going to the grocery store? You're going to the post office? Okay, you deserve to have strangers come up and rub your belly and ask you questions. You totally deserve that. When you left the house, you should have known that was going to happen. I mean, you were asking for it. I don't, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. I am very direct. You got exactly what you deserved when you selfishly left the house. I don't know if you have other children. Um, I don't know if this is your first or not, but you're a mommy now. Mm -mm -mm. You don't get to do these things anymore willy-nilly. No. You, I, I really can't think of any good reason for you to have to go to the grocery store, first of all. I never go to the grocery store. <laughs> I don't. Because we grow all our own food. And I... You know, I, I don't need anything there. What would they have that I would need? You know, if you're if you're a woke mom, if you're a decent person, there's nothing in there that you need. It is a box full of little boxes of chemicals. You know, it's just, it's like a, a factory of cancer. And that's all it is. You're just, you know, don't get me started on the grocery store. In the post office, what do you need to do at the post office? I mean, I, I don't know. You're just silly. You're really silly. Anything you need to do, you could take out there and put in your mailbox. That's really as far as you need to go. Walk to the mailbox, go back in the house. I mean, you're exposing yourself to all kinds of germs unnecessarily. So, honestly, I think people touching you and asking questions, that's the least of your concern. You really need to focus on how lazy and ridiculous you are. All right, Jenny says, My four-year-old daughter won't entertain herself for more than five minutes. She wants me to play with her constantly and follows me around all day. I've got my hands full caring for my younger seven-month-old baby, and I feel like I can't get anything done. Help! Oh, Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. Where do I start with you? Okay, first of all, I know she's not four years old. Brag time. Brag time again for Harvest. Um, I remember when Haven was 46 months old and she played her first Mozart piece. Oh, it was beautiful. Beautiful. I listened to the whole thing and she didn't mess up once. I was so proud. Um, you know, I can't really relate to having a child who can't entertain themselves for more than five minutes. All I have to do is give my children a calculus worksheet and they're happy. You know, and they zip right through, and they want another. So I end up having to give them the entire workbook. That usually holds them for five minutes. You know, because my children are really, really advanced. I don't know what I did to deserve such awesome kids, though. But it sounds to me like that is not your problem. Um, I bet your daughter drools on herself and stuff. Bless her heart. Um... But look, again, I bet she's not even verbal yet. No offense. I mean, I'm sure you're doing your best, but you say that she wants you to play, she wants you to play with her constantly and she follows you around all day. Well, again, you have to pay attention to nonverbal cues from your littles. Um, if she's following you around constantly and wanting you to play, that's what you need to be doing. Here, little Jenny, you need to be focusing on your children. I understand you have a seven-month-old. There's no reason why you can't have time to devote your full attention to both of these children all day. I mean, I, I could do it for my children. I didn't sleep. I was awake 24 hours a day for my children. I was always there for my children. I, I will always be there for my children because I'm a mommy and that's what we do. I guess you could say, you know, oh, we need to sleep, we need to eat. We... <sighs> They're just excuses. It's just noise, Jenny. Spend time with your children. You know, I'd be willing to bet that you spend a lot of time doing other stuff. You know, like cooking or cleaning. There's no reason you can't do all this at once. You know, it really just takes good planning Maybe some lessons in efficiency. You know, you're probably a little bit lazy. You probably like to sit around a lot. 
you know, gab on the phone with your friends or whatever it is you do. I, I don't know what you're doing with all your time. Obviously, you're doing something with it. So, if your child is having problems and she's very clingy, it's your fault. And you're the only one who can fix it. So, if you ever want to be able to get anything done, you just need to work harder at it. And our last question comes from Lola. Lola says, My daughter is almost four and is still not potty trained. God, sir, Lola. No offense, but get your shit together. Uh, no preschool will take her. Well, she is potty trained to a point. She uses the potty to go number two, but won't use it for number one unless we tell her to. How do I get her to finish potty training? What is it with all you people and your supposed four-year-olds? It's like there's an epidemic of some sort. Um, wow. You know, the more I hear from people like you, the better I feel about my own littles. Both of my children potty trained themselves within three weeks. I know. I am so blessed. Of course, I listened to their cues. I paid attention to their cues and I responded immediately when they signaled the need to go. And unfortunately, that is just something that a lot of mommies don't really care to do. I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to explain it, that you have these children that are, you know, five, six months old who aren't even potty trained yet. That's the only explanation for it. Lazy mommies. You know, I guess they just like buying these disgusting uh, disposable diapers. Uh, these chemical laden bombs that they drop in all of our landfills. Laziness. Laziness. That's all it is, uh, Lola. Laziness. If you have a supposed four-year-old who is still not potty trained, that is completely on you. Uh, you are past the point of being able to use excuses for this. Um, but I guess it's a blessing in disguise because you also said that no preschool will take her. That's good. It gives you an opportunity to see that preschool is no place for your child. Children don't belong in preschool. They don't belong in daycare. Why would you have a child if you didn't want to raise it? Why would you have a child if you didn't want to educate it? You're just going to pass it off to somebody you don't even know? What, so you can have some free time to yourself after only four years of being a mommy? I mean, I guess, you know, if that's your priority, it's not illegal. You know, I, I can't make you take care of your own child. I can only suggest strongly that you consider doing that. Take this as a chance. This is like your second chance, Lola, to, um, you know, start raising your child. Maybe spend a few minutes with her occasionally. Pick up on her cues. Follow her lead. And she will show you what you need to be doing to help her progress to the next milestone. And she is woefully behind. I mean, sorry, we won't run down the list of all the things my children could do at your child's age. Um, I don't want to make you feel too bad at this point. I feel like I've already been kind of blunt with you. So I don't want to make you feel completely worthless. But trust me, if I told you everything my children could do at your daughter's age... You would feel, you would feel, you'd feel like scum, honestly. I mean, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I'm just way better at this whole mommy thing than you are. Uh, so, if you want to get her potty trained, you need to get off your own ass and work with her. Okay? Don't just sit around waiting for it to happen, because it won't. Obviously, or it would have happened long before now. So... You need to address your own shortcomings so that you can help your child actually catch up with literally all of the other children her age. Because I promise you, she is woefully behind. And it's all your fault. So, congratulations for that. 
Okay, Frank is telling me that we have run over. I have your soap. If you have any further questions that you would like for me to answer on our next episode of Harvest Knows Best, please send them to P.O. Box 1104 Camden. Thank you so much for watching. Namaste.